Well, let's bring in our panel now, our panel of political strategists. Graeme Morris, very good afternoon to you. And Bruce Hawker, thank you for joining me this afternoon. Bruce, let's start with you. Look, we don't see Labor too often in a tight spot in a bit of a policy pickle, but that seems to be where they are right now. Um, what do you think is likely to happen on this issue of medical transfers as far as Labor is concerned? Well, at the outset, I'd say it's to their credit that they do take these issues very seriously and do have to weigh up competing views about the issue. Having said that, and as somebody who's been in a lot of campaigns, both winning and losing, and on the losing side when we've been involved in really tough uh, arguments about asylum seekers, then I think that Labor should be listening to the advice of the security personnel that they're being briefed by this afternoon. I think that should be the final determination or determinator of what uh, Labor does in its policies. I think the final decision... You can't, you can't reject uh, that advice, can you? I think it's very, very hard. And, uh, and I think it's very credible to say that the final decision should rest with the minister. Because whether it's a panel that makes a decision about these things or the minister, it's the government at the end of the day that will have to accept responsibility for mm. what happens if anything were to go wrong. So Do you my the left view will is... cop that, though, in the Labor Party? Will the left go crazy over that or will they just, uh, you know, swallow that? Uh, I think in the view of the fact that this election is just a matter of months away uh, and we've seen what a, uh, a, a crafty government can do with issues like uh, children overboard, that the left would be well advised to accept that uh, a Labor government with a compassionate view towards these people on Manus Island and Nauru, but with a discretion in the, in the uh, minister to make a final decision, is a better course than remaining in opposition. Well, that's, that's probably right. Uh, Graham, um, is there any risk for the government on this issue? This has been a winner for them for years and years and years. Do you think there's any shift in community sentiment, though, about the, the plight of those on Nauru and Manus? Not by the time the government's finished. Look, if I were Mr Shorten, I, in 50 minutes, I'd be going into his caucus room and I'd be telling the ratbags to pull their head in. His support in the community is quite brittle. This is Bill Shorten, support in the community is quite brittle. He cannot afford to have the government out there saying, look, here are the pictures of what happened last time. You know, you've got, you've got women and children dashed against rocks. You've got fathers watching their children slip from their hands. And all it takes is one softening of this policy and that will start again. And it's all right for these people behind Mr Shorten to say, to, to make themselves feel good. But if they were ever to be in government, they're not the ones who will have the responsibility. It'll be Bill Shorten. And I think they've got to be very, very careful on this. And I think the way Mr Shorten was talking, he wants to walk away from it. It's just a couple of people behind him are trying to lock in, lock him in, and I don't think they've got his best interest at heart or the Labor Party's. Bruce, was it a mistake for Labor to vote for this in the Senate last year, and how did it end, in, end up in that position? Well, I think the real decision is what happens in the House of Representatives, whether it becomes law, whether certain amendments get accepted. Uh, I think, you know, you can have 20-20 hindsight on these things and be absolutely perfect, but... Um, yeah, but politics is a bit more complicated this, than that. And, and, sorry, Bruce, and, this, goes to, this yeah. goes to what sort of government this could be, right, a shortened government. Um, you know, 2020 hindsight, sure, but you don't want a government making mistakes like this. Well, I don't think they're about to make a mistake, frankly, because there are two Houses of Parliament and it has to be determined in both Houses. They've had time to reflect on it. They're obviously having serious debates about the issue. They're weighing up a number of issues and they're trying to maintain and I think, credibly, a decent position on this by saying that, ultimately, the minister is the person who should make the decision about these things. And a Labor minister, hopefully, and I think most likely, is going to have a more sensible and compassionate view about these issues than someone like Peter Dutton, who's clearly just working this for all it's worth, as is Scott Morrison. This is Children Overboard Revisited. You know, it's a, it's a scheme, it's a tricky way of trying to confuse and upset the Australian public about an issue that they really shouldn't be disturbed about. Well, you reckon, you know, Labor you reckon has made it clear. Labor has made, no, Labor has made it absolutely clear that not, they're not going to let uh, people smugglers back into the game. That's one big lesson we learned from the Rudd and Gillard right. governments. And they're not going to do it. And, uh, and I think despite the uh, urgings of Morrison and Dutton and others to 
try to convince the electorate that they are going to do this, we'll see that come election day, the electorate will be satisfied that this is not going to be a result of any policy that Labor pursues. Le uh, Graeme, you were there at the press club today for the Prime Minister's speech. What did you take out of it as a strategist um, in terms of his performance? Uh, look, I thought one of the really interesting things is the Prime Minister had broadened what he means by security. That we've got... OK, we've got, we've got national security that we've just talked about. We've got stuff in the Indian Ocean with, with other Chinese and whatnot. That's security. But then he's added, and we have the security of women in their own home. We have the cyber security thing where you've got those grubs trawling for our children. And, and, you know, he's saying these are all of the security decisions that a prime minister and a government has to look at. And I thought, you know, I thought, A, for the first time in a long while, a minister or a prime minister has used the press club properly to pull together an argument and... and to announce some new stuff. Um, I, and the other thing I think that we've learned from the Prime Minister today is that he went, he's been through that phase where he gets asked a question and he, he answers it, then he answers the next seven questions at the beginning, where he's now, he's now more concise on top of it and I thought, I thought he looked like a Prime Minister. Yep. Bruce, I mean, what did, what did you make of uh, his performance there today? Well, he would want to talk about security, wouldn't he? Because that's basically all he's got to discuss. I mean, I think uh, the electorate would rather be hearing about the Bank Royal Commission and implementation of recommendations relating to that. That's going to affect people's lives in a much more immediate way in the coming months and years than, uh, than a more esoteric discussion about security. But the government will always want to go to that because they know that that's an area where they can exercise wedge politics. And wedge politics is something which they've done quite effectively. But it's not to their credit that they do that. It's just a tactic. It's a strategy. It's a mechanism to confuse and divide the Australian public. And I don't think it's going to work this time. Let me just bring up the uh, news poll figures today. Labor's primary vote went up a tick. Uh, the two-party result stayed the same. Uh, lead for Labor at 53 to 47%. Bruce, to you first on this. Uh, it entrenches, I suppose, the figures coming out of the summer that we saw a couple of weeks ago in the news poll. Still has Labor on track for a thumping win. Um, mm. what, what do you make of those numbers? Well, I think they're good for Labor, frankly. But, you know, as we keep saying, I don't think they're about to take anything for granted. Although I do think that the debate we're having now about, uh, about security and uh, refugees goes to an increasing panic in the government that they're not going to actually shift that particularly... Uh, much if they keep going on the course that they are. Evidence by, uh, the, um, by, by Christopher Pine's outpourings in the last 24 hours. I mean, what are we to make of that, other than, you know, that this is a government which remains hopelessly divided? Uh, it's amazing that they keep returning to these issues time and time again. Uh, they're ill-disciplined and they're divided, and I think that's one of the things... That, that, that's pointing towards this significant victory for Labor if these numbers hold up. They, and it will be a big right. win if they were to win it, by that, it, by it, that it, margin. There's, there's two, two stories out of the poll. One is that the government has cemented the underdog position uh, firmly. <laughs> and the other is well that, done. you know, as, as, <laughs> as of now, and it has been for a while, the community is saying, look, we'd not like a new government, but we definitely do not want Bill Shorten to head it. It's quite an interesting and strong and an entrenched position. That's not unusual, though, for opposition leaders to be behind. Yeah, no. but we are in exactly. a different era now where personalities do count. And, and I, think, no. I think this could be the first one in quite a while where we are seeing the leader drag down the vote by the time we get there. And he and Chris Bowen particularly are giving the government a hell of a lot of ammo for the campaign. All right, we've got to go. Yeah, uh, Graeme yeah. Morris, Bruce Hawker, thank you both very much for joining us. Look forward thank to catching you. up again next week. Now, uh, we're